There's abundance in everything. We don't have to think about air. Is there an abundance of air? There just is, right? It's the same thing with clothes, it's the same thing with everything. This is shit. This is stuff. You can get a new pair of shoes and then someone steps on it and you go, oh, you stopped on my new shoes. Who gives a fuck about your shoes? Seriously. Just get more. You know? It doesn't end. But being attached to anything is the beginning of your downfall. Anything. Because everything changes. You know? I grew up in LA, maybe eight minutes from the beach, but I didn't touch the water till I was 20. I was, growing up, I was pretty well off, and um, my dad never treated anybody different, period. So as a child, I would watch him like deal with janitors, and then I'd watch him deal with his superiors at work. And everybody got the same amount of respect, the same love. And I remember as a child, maybe around 14, I'd be like, why does daddy always talk to everybody? You know, we'd be pissed off because he'd like stop and like acknowledge everyone. And sure enough, it played off. I lived my life from this constant place of competition. Now I understand there is no competition. The only competition is with myself. There are uh, mm -hmm. powers that be that make a lot of money off of our separation. Mm -hmm. Am I running the show or is um, McDonald's running the show? I'd always question why I eat certain things or why I do this or why am I a Christian? The social conditioning that comes with being black, you know? I was uh, connected to who I was supposed to be, you know, according to the media, according to music, according to everything that's pumped up. As soon as I started questioning all these things and unattaching myself from what society says I'm supposed to be, um, I came home from a summer break and I walked past my neighbor's garage and I saw a surfboard. And I was like, hmm, I'm gonna try that. I got pulverized. I mean, I got jacked up. <laughs> and I'm super um, competitive with myself, especially. So, not being able to get it like that, like, lit this fire in me. And all of a sudden, uh, maybe it took me about two weeks to stand up for the first time. Through that, I started feeling this crazy connection to nature and God and seeing that I wasn't separate from the water either, you know, like everything's touching something, everything, you know, we're all connected. So where do you draw the line? How do you figure out what's your style and what's in style's thought process of style? I've been wearing Converse for 20 years. Um, I usually buy things from flea markets and uh, vintage shops, etc, etc, because they have a story and it's like I'm passing on the legacy. It was cold in the morning, but then I stayed at the beach. And I got somebody's scissors, and I started cutting it and ripping it to pieces. And this is what it is now, um, which is pretty amazing, I must say. I pretty much wear this piece every day. Um, most of it is from West Africa or Nepal. Or, it doesn't really matter to me. He, he sits down and sort of uh, has an interview with you and gets a, a piece of your vibe and builds a piece off of that. And then this piece is from Pakistan. Um, and it came from a flea market. I love it because it makes me feel like, um, like Aladdin. You know? The dopest part about these, because I wear these every day, I'm probably going on 75 days straight. They button in the back. So depending on what type of shoes you have, like if I have you know, some uh, really gangster boots on, these can go over them, you know? If I want to be, you know, straight leg tight, boom. Okay, so this means love, right? Each symbol has a different meaning. The particular one that I have on right now is triangle, which is body, mind, and spirit. This clothing line is about returning back to that inner child. It doesn't matter who you are and what culture, you don't speak the language, when you see a baby, you go, oh. Why? Because they're in inherent bliss, right? They know exactly who they are and they're living it perfectly, right? We push things on them. I have emotions. I, I cry when I can. I'm not so in tune with that emotion um, because for, you know, years, 20-something years, I got that beat out of me. Little boys, 
who should feel emotion start to swallow that emotion and they change it into anger or frustration or competition and that's who I was. Everything about me kind of changed when I started being aware of what you put in is what you get out. Um, so I started putting more foods that were alive in instead of death. Um, I felt less aggressive. If our lifetime is like a, a blink in the universe, why do we play? Right? So, um, I just, the idea of exploring the entire earth and like playing with different cultures really pumps me up. Recently I was in India for a couple months. First I was doing a movie and then I just stayed. And right at the end, I kind of got stuck. And there was no flights for another week. My money was pretty much gone. I didn't know anybody and I was in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And it was nighttime. And it kicked in. Like I, I had been talking about um, being at home wherever I stand. And then right at that moment I was like, no, I'm not scared. I am home. Every single person around me is my brother and sister. Mm -hmm. And right at that moment, maybe, maybe 30 minutes later, I heard over the loud system that they found me a ticket to Dubai. As soon as I released it, they found a ticket. A miraculous ticket. At all, all times we have a choice. You know, there's, there's a friend of mine explained it to me like this. There's the envelope of suffering, or there's the envelope of directing your thoughts. And with directing your thoughts, you change everything. So at any given moment, I could say, well, I'm screwed, you know? I didn't get that check, so I can't pay for this, right? That's the envelope of suffering. Or I could say, ah, oh, I didn't get that check. Hmm. Wonder what's next. 